Hi everyone, welcome to the Thinking Crypto YouTube channel. I hope you're healthy and doing well. On this channel, we cover the news, facts, and sentiments about the crypto market. We also interview many of the folks who are building and investing in the asset class. I've interviewed CZ, Binance's CEO. And just today, I uploaded my interview with the uh, CEO of Vertalo, which is tokenizing about $500 million in assets on the Tezos blockchain. So be sure to check that out. We talk about that in crypto regulations and more. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button. Now guys, speaking of crypto regulations, Congress has now introduced 32 crypto and blockchain bills. This is big and we continue to see the dialogue taking place, a lot of different bills being introduced and um, it is a good sign because we are headed to clear regulations in the U.S. It's moving slower than expected and that, you know, than we would like, of course, but uh, things are in motion. And we saw even in the recent stimulus bills, there was talks about the digital dollar. And of course, the digital dollar is going to use blockchain technology. So there's a chart here broken down in the article showing uh, how that is is divided as far as what type of legislation. So crypto and blockchain legislation in the 116th Congress 2019 through 2020. So the biggest part of that is 41%, uh, which is regulatory framework and treatment of cryptocurrency and blockchain. That's great to see that is the bulk or a higher percentage of the bills. Uh, the second is use of cryptocurrency and potential terrorism, money laundering and human and sex trafficking. So of course, they need to make sure cryptos are not being used for illegal activities and to of course protect consumers. Um, third is the promoting the use of blockchain technology by the US government. And finally, the US central bank digital currency and digital dollar. So don't miss this, guys. It's not sexy as price, but these are the frameworks, the infrastructure that needs to be put into place so that capital that's sitting on the sidelines can come into the market. There's a lot of uh, companies that are want to invest in crypto and digital assets, but because of lack of regulatory clarity, they don't want to risk it. And we're going to see, I believe, once the U.S. crypto regulations are passed, the floodgates open. So this is really great. And this article really outlines it. But you can see the share volume, you know, over the past year, guys, this, this is a very bullish sign. So there appears to be no shortage of interest in cryptocurrency and blockchain policy in D.C. As members in the House of Representatives and U.S. Senators have introduced a total of 32 bills in the 116th Congress, thanks to Facebook's introduction of Project Libra ongoing efforts to achieve regulatory clarity for the industry and the novel concept of the U.S. digital dollar, the level of interest on Capitol Hill appears to have grown beyond what uh, has typically been just a handful of legislators. So absolutely agree with that. We're seeing more and more folks are coming on board who understand tech, who understand crypto and trying to introduce the proper legislation, get more folks on board. We've seen uh, former CFTC chairman Chris Giancarlo, known as Crypto Dad, has been pushing for the digital dollar and is uh, certainly on board with crypto. Same thing with Crypto Mom, Hester Pierce at the SEC. So uh, progress is being made. I wish it would move faster. And actually, like I said, guys, in my interview with um, Dave Hendricks of uh, Vertalo, we talked about that earlier. So definitely check that out. So things are progressing both at a federal level as well as at a local state level. And, you know, I'm here working in New York, so I've certainly seen a lot of uh, pro crypto activity here in New York. Other states like Wyoming are doing a great job. So New York crypto regulator adds Silk Road investigator as a general counsel. So uh, the New York regulator that issues bit licenses adds a Silk Road, Road investigator to its legal counsel. So uh, many of you know about Silk Road. For those of you who do not, it was a uh, digital black market platform where you could you know, get <laughs> illegal activities done. And, you you know, the currency uh, of choice was Bitcoin. And the founder, uh, Ross William Ulbricht, he's in jail right now. Unfortunately, um, I don't think he should be. You know, some people may disagree with me, um, but he really built, built like a Craigslist for illegal activities. But, you know, he should have served some time. I don't think he needs to be in like where he is right now in the total amount of years. Um, they, they could use this guy to actually maybe work uh, with the government to help make this crypto, crypto regulations better, right? Instead of him serving, uh, you know, a long jail sentence and not using his knowledge and skill set. 
you know, they, they could certainly use him. That's just my opinion. Um, like I said, he should have served some time for what he did. I understand the law, of course. But, um, you know, they have, I think they're treating him, um, you know, really bad. Like he's serving a life sentence. I mean, I, I don't think that's, that's uh, <laughs> you know, that's fair. Like a life sentence for that. I mean, um, anyway, moving ahead here. So they're using uh, the, the investigator who you know, was investigating uh, Silk Road historically to kind of boost up their services here because they do issue the bit licenses. I don't really like the bit license, you know, as it's, it's just another roadblock for a lot of crypto companies. Like you see a lot of exchanges are waiting just to get their bit license. They want to operate in New York, but it's holding things up. So, you know, hopefully they can uh, make this better. <clears throat> so the department regulates financial services and products, which include cryptocurrency related businesses. It awards the two types of licenses that many crypto businesses seek, a money transmitter license and a bit license. So, uh, but it's good that they're adding these people. So once again, you can, they can filter out and, and track down the bad exchanges, the people who are doing bad things. Um, and uh, I do wish they would move faster and be better at the bit license, though. But uh, at least we're seeing, once again, the infrastructure being set up for the growth of the asset class. And on that note, um, a lot of government and world associations like the World Economic Forum are, of course, now backing crypto and blockchain. We've seen a World Economic Forum t uh, report talk about how central banks should build their CBDCs where they highlight Bitcoin and Ethereum. They highlight XRP as a wholesale solution for CBDCs. So they're well aware of the benefits of crypto and they're looking to leverage blockchain technology to restart the global ec economy here. Um, they believe that DLT supply, so distributed ledger technology, supply chain solutions can help reboot the global economy, launching a blockchain deployment kit. So see where we're headed, guys, and everything is going to be on the blockchain. It's it's pretty crazy what's what's going on, and we're headed to that token economy. And that's what I was not to keep bringing this up, but that's what I was talking to Dave uh, Hendricks here about, and how they're tokenizing real estate, they're tokenizing securities. We're gonna see tokenization of everything. We've talked about uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, who's the NBA player, tokenizing his. Uh, NBA contract. I've interviewed the entrepreneur here, Alex uh, Masmej, who's tokenizing himself as an entrepreneur. So big things to come, guys. And uh, these governments and world leaders are recognizing now the power of crypto and blockchain. And um, I think I've mentioned it on this channel, guys. My goal, um, you know, this year is to try to learn how to build a blockchain just to keep my uh, self in a position to get a job a year from now. I'm not saying that I'm not going to have a job, but just in case, you never know. Technology is moving at a rapid play, a, a pace and things are changing very fast. So you want to keep yourself marketable. You want to be able to code a blockchain or know about blockchain so that you can go work at different companies or whatever it is or your own, the industry you're in right now and see how you can apply blockchain to it because that's what's going to happen. And I hope you guys understand that. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the issues we saw here in the United States where, you know, manufacturing jobs got moved overseas, but technology has replaced a lot of jobs and people are left without work. They don't have the skill sets and they have to adapt. It, we are headed to a very tech heavy world. Everything's going to be, for the most part, digital. I mean, and this pandemic is going to even make it more so. So... Uh, you got to really start thinking ahead. Where am I going to be five to 10 years from now? Am I going to be relevant? You know, am I going to have the skill sets to work in the in a new tech economy? That's what's happening, guys. You know, whether you love it or hate it, that is what's happening. So that's what I'm looking at. Of course, I'm, I'm very passionate about crypto and blockchain. So I'm, I'm looking to learn as much as I can because uh, everybody, the governments, everybody's going to be using blockchain. Um, guys, interesting uh, update here around the DeFi movement. Bitcoin is being brought to the DeFi, decentralized finance world. Let's talk about it. Network bringing Bitcoin to DeFi taps, Libra member Bison Trails for staking. This is very interesting. Uh, you all know I, I'm a big believer in the DeFi movement. I believe we're in version 1.0. It has flaws that need to be fixed. We talked about the DeFi hack the other day. But as with all things, uh, there's version one, which needs to be cleaned up. Version two is better. Version three will be better. We just got to keep working at it. So 
Decentralized finance protocol Keep Network has tapped Bison Trails to provide non-custodial staking services for TBTC, an ERC-20 representation of Bitcoin deposits. So interesting, interesting setup here that you can stake Bitcoin with through this setup. Keep a project from Blockchain Venture Studio Thesis operates TBDC in a trustless manner by breaking Bitcoin deposits across smart contracts held by various Keep users. Keep also chose staking provider Staked, Figment, and Bore Network as partners for staking services. Infrastructure is important because if your node is being asked to sign a message or it's holding onto BTC as one of the shards, you ideally don't ever want to be offline, Bison Trail's protocol specialist Victor Boonin told Coindesk in an interview. Bison Trail Trails provides blockchain as a service for multiple chains, including the Libra Association and Polkadot. Now it's securing tokenized versions of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Very, very interesting, guys. And the DeFi market is going to be huge. It's going to be huge. I will be interviewing some folks who are running DeFi businesses, so stay tuned for more of that. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this is a very interesting concept that they're using Bitcoin, and you can stake on it. And uh, it's it's interesting. I, I you know I still have to do some more research to kind of wrap my head around it, but it's very interesting what's what's happening. Finally, guys, on a note of Bitcoin and mining here, Chinese officials support renewable energy powered cryptocurrency mining. So don't let, end, you know, some of the things they put out or said, some people have said, oh, China is going to ban Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining, and I've said in many videos, if you've been subscribed to this channel, that is going to be one of those macroeconomic political races or power struggles. Um, I've shown you guys a lot of facts of Bitcoin mining that is going to be is ramping up here in the United States. Big money is doubling down. So whether you how are you, if you love or hate Bitcoin, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. What matters is the facts and what's taking place. That the U.S. government is allowing the world's largest Bitcoin mining farm to be built in Texas. Fidelity, I shown you guys the LinkedIn jobs. They're hiring Bitcoin inge uh, mining engineers across the country. Uh, there's a bunch of other mining companies that are popping up all over the place in the United States, guys. And we just saw Binance, they launched their Bitcoin mining pool. And, uh, you know, China is not going to try to give up that power. They control right now, you know, Bitmain and the mining pool there, guys. So they are looking for alternatives or cleaner energy here, renewable energy here to support the mining because, yes, it does use a lot of electricity and all that. It's not entirely great for the environment if you want to look at it that way. But um, it's not going to be forever. Bitcoin mining is, of course, kind of ramping down in a sense that we're getting near to the supply, right? Remember, um, the, re the halvings coming up and we are, um, you know, getting closer to that 21 million. So Chinese officials from the uh, Yan municip municipality, excuse me, released a statement on the use of a local hydraulic hydropower derived electricity for cryptocurrency mining operations. So they're looking for alternatives. They're not banning it. They're not getting rid of it. And um, you know, let's see uh, what they come up with. And you, as you can imagine, the U.S. is watching this, and many other countries as well. You guys know about what's being built in Texas, and big things are ahead. I hope Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin will do well as a digital gold store of value. I also hold XRP, and many times you have maximalists on both ends bumping heads and fighting over that, which I think is complete nonsense and a waste of time. Um, and uh, I believe in XRP as a bridge currency, a bridge asset for global currencies. I believe in Ethereum as the smart contract platform and for the DeFi movement. So different use cases and uh, certainly bullish on them and hold all three of my portfolio. And guess what? I don't have to uh, fight with anybody. I can, I'm here to make money. I don't have time for nonsense. And uh as always, I'll continue to show you guys the facts, um, not uh, in you know bring emotions into this. This is about facts. What's being built? Who's investing in what? What are the governments doing? Where is the big money putting their funds? Where's the money going? Follow the money, right? So, guys, what do you think about this news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.